Hey everybody, Adam Savage here with a show and tell from my cave and an old bit of Mythbusters history show and tell it is. Uh, this is a little sculpture, a little mechanical device that I built while we were filming the Mythbusters Cabin Fever episode. Uh, this was, I believe, Actually, I can't remember if it's the first or the second time we went to Alaska. We went to Alaska twice while we were making Mythbusters, um, both times to help promote uh, a bunch of the Alaska shows that Discovery had on at the time. Um, they like to do that synergistic thing where if they have one program that's doing really well, they kind of refer to aspects of that program with other programming. We did a Deadliest Catch episode on Mythbusters. Uh, you know, it is peculiar that we never did a dirty job. I just feels like, I feels like something we should have done. Mike, Mike, we got to do a dirty job together someday. Well, you know, never say never, but it seems crazy that we never did one. However, we did do a couple of Alaska episodes to support Discovery's Alaska programming. And both times we went to Alaska in January. I have to say, Alaska is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen, even in January. And I've heard in the summer, it's like you never want to leave the place. It, it was gorgeous. Uh, we spent time in both Ketchikan on one shoot and Matsu County uh, uh, on another shoot. And I, I really, really can't remember where we filmed the Cabin Fever episode, but we found a... Uh, we found a set of cabins that were for rent uh, in a relatively shut down uh, 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 cabin uh, rental place. <laughs> uh, and we set out for Jamie and I to sequester ourselves for something around two to five days. We really didn't know how long we were going to be in situ. It was generally expected that Jamie would do better than I would. I mean, for obvious reasons. It's clear that Jamie does not need people to function. <laughs> but again, I'm, I'm also like the cabin fever episode bears directly on this moment in time, this quarantine. It's about how you can keep your brain occupied. And in that regard, when we filmed the cabin fever episode, Carrie Byron did me one of the greatest solids that anyone's done for me on a shoot, which was she left a couple of wire coat hangers in the closet. Um, now, let me tell you about wire coat hanger wire. It is my favorite wire. It is just heavy enough to be mechanically stable, and yet it's light enough that it's pretty easy to bend with your basic tools. And to do from fairly precise bending, uh, some fairly nice bending, I have fixed so many problems with coat hangers. I've broken into cars that I've locked my keys in. I have uh, used it to snake things out of the sewer that dropped down there. And uh, I have built devices like this one. The thing about coat hanger wire is it's both structurally, it, it has some structure to it, but it's also really ductile. It's very soft, weird, weirdly mild, not weirdly, but it's just a mild steel. Um, I think of it as this like sort of perfect hybrid of rigid and movable. Um, and in that regard, I think of coat hanger wire as the fingernail of materials. Let me explain. When you want to get like a sticker off of something like this, there is there are few objects better than your fingernail for getting underneath a thing without scratching the stuff below it. So your fingernail, the chitinous material your fingernails are made out of is like this perfect, perfect mid-range hardness, right? It's hard enough that you can really get some purchase on a sticker, soft enough that you won't scratch the thing underneath. And you try that with a blade and you're just gonna scratch away. So there's this way in which a fingernail is like this perfect bit of material science. The coat hanger wire is the same to me. And so as I was settling into my cabin adventure and I noticed there were some coat hangers in the closet, I was like, well, I know how several hours of my time spent uh, in quarantine here in Alaska will be spent. And 
I built this little mechanical arrangement. Later, I found out, I said, boy, it was great. There was a couple of wire hangers. And Carrie said, yeah, I left those for you. So Carrie Byron, you did me a solid. I, I, you are a, 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 what do you call it? I, I want to say a king among men, but let's, let's use a gender neutral term. Uh, a mensch. You're a mensch. Thank you. Uh, so I want to just show you this device because uh, it is a little bit of a cam. It is a, oh, wow, it doesn't quite, oh, yeah, yeah there we go. That was it. Right. I don't think I ever got it to spin completely, but it's a little mechanical arrangement for tipping this cup over. And I used some, uh, this is a bit of the cardboard tube from the, uh, from the coat hanger that the wire was taken from. By the way, I was allowed to keep my Leatherman. I was allowed to keep my Leatherman multi-tool with which I could cut and shape every aspect of this. So uh, Carrie knew I was bringing my Leatherman. She left me the coat hanger. It's so awesome. All right, let's get some close-ups so you guys can see this thing. Yeah, there we go. I love objects, obviously, for the stories that they tell. Uh, and this one tells a particularly nifty story to me. Uh, it is one of generosity and ingenuity, and also it reminds me of a couple of amazing trips to Alaska. Thank you guys for joining me on this little Mythbusters show and tell. Have a great day. Hey, uh, go get a wire coat hanger and make something out of a wire coat hanger. I swear to goodness, it will, uh, will make your day just a little bit better. I have little pokey things. I have kitchen implements I've improved with these things. Again, the fingernail of materials. You cannot overstate the awesomeness of the wire in a wire coat hanger. Thanks, guys. See you next time.